OK, so this is the general equation of a circle in 2D space. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at a nice way of capturing this general form of a circle using differential equations. So we'll start with this equation of a circle with a, b and r as our constants. Then we'll turn this into a differential equation which doesn't have any constants, where the solutions to our differential equation will correspond exactly to the set of circles in R2. So this is a really nice way of capturing the set of all circles, and it's going to look very different from this general form that we're used to with the constants. So our starting point here is we need to think of one of our variables x and y as a function of the other. So let's say that we take y as a function of x, then a, b and r, these are all just constants. And we know when we rearrange this, we're looking for our solution should be b plus or minus the square root of r squared minus x minus a squared. So here you might have spotted that y isn't really a proper function of x, but we can look for solutions where we'll have one solution will be the positive square root and another solution will be the negative square root when we solve this differential equation. So what we're really going to end up with is a load of semicircles rather than circles as our solutions. And we could do, in general, we could use a result called the implicit function theorem to show that y is a differentiable function of x in certain neighbourhoods. But for this problem, we can just take for granted that y is going to be a nice differentiable function of x. So now, to actually get the differential equation, it's not too difficult because all we're going to do is some implicit differentiation on this starting equation here. And then we'll keep differentiating until we've got enough equations that we can eliminate all of the constants, get rid of a, b, and r. So we start off with our original equation, x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. Let's differentiate this with respect to x. So we're going to get 2 into x minus a plus. So now when we differentiate this, you need to think of y as a function of x. So using the chain rule, we'll have a factor of dy dx. I'm just going to write as y dash. Then we also need to differentiate the outer function, so you have a 2y minus b term there as well. And then when we differentiate r squared, this is just a constant, so that gives us 0. So we can't eliminate all of the constants yet. Let's differentiate again, so here we get 2. But what we'll do is we'll get rid of these two 2s before we proceed, just to make life a little bit easier. So when we differentiate now, we're going to get just 1 here. Then using the product rule, when we differentiate y minus b, we're just going to get dy dx, so another factor of y dash, so we'll have y dash squared. Then when we differentiate y dash here, we'll get y minus b multiplied by the second derivative, y dash dash, and this 0 stays as 0. So we still can't quite eliminate all of our constants. We could get rid of b, but not a. So let's differentiate one more time. So now this 1 disappears. When we differentiate this using the product rule, we'll get 2 times dy dx times the second derivative. So now when we differentiate this with the product rule, we'll get a y dash plus a y dash times y dash dash. Then we need to differentiate this term as well, so we'll get plus y minus b into the third derivative equals 0. So you can see here these two terms can be collected together, so we get a 3y dash y dash dash plus y minus b into y dash 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 equals 0. So what we can do now is we could take this equation here, and what we'll do is we'll use this second derivative equation as well. And we can make y minus b the subject here, so that then we get one differential equation with no constants a, b, or r involved. So if we make y minus b the subject here, we're going to get 1 plus y dash squared divided by y dash dash, the negative of that. So the negative of this is going to be equal to, and now we'll have the negative of 3y dash times y dash dash, just making y minus b the subject of this equation again. Then we divide by the third derivative of y. And here we can get rid of our two negative signs. So the claim now is that this differential equation, the solutions to this correspond to exactly the set of all circles in R2. So it's clear that starting from the equation of a circle, we get this differential equation. So any circle will satisfy this differential equation. But what we'll do now is we'll actually solve this differential equation to make sure that there aren't any other solutions, so other shapes, just to make sure that this corresponds to exactly the set of circles and nothing else. So to solve this differential equation, perhaps the first thing that we'll spot is there's not actually any y term in there. So we can do a substitution just to reduce the order of this differential equation. Let's define u to be equal to y dash, which is dy 
by dx. So then substituting u into our equation, we get the slightly nicer looking 1 plus u squared divided by u dash is now equal to 3u u dash divided by u dash dash, the second derivative of u. What we're actually going to do next from here is we're going to do another substitution because we can turn this into a slightly nicer differential equation again. What we'll do is we'll introduce v which is equal to u dash or equal to du by dx or the second derivative of y with respect to x. So let's see what this does to our differential equation. This will turn this into a nice differential equation just in terms of u and v. To get 1 plus u squared divided by u dash, which is now v, equals 3u times v divided by v dash. So this looks like a separable differential equation in u and v, but let's not forget that v dash is dv by dx rather than dv by du, so there's still some more work to do here. But fortunately there's quite a nice trick we can use, so this is quite a common trick in manipulating differential equations. v dash is dv by dx, but then using the chain rule we can write dv by dx as dv by du times du by dx. So then this is slightly nicer because we've got dv by du. But then what is du by dx? du by dx is actually just v. So we can say then that v dash is equal to dv by du times v. So let's replace this v dash now by dv by du times v. So we get 3uv over dv by du times v. You see these two v's cancel here in the fraction. And on the left hand side this stays the same, 1 plus u squared all over v. So now this is a separable differential equation just in terms of u and v, which we can solve. So taking all of our v's onto the left hand side we have 1 over v times dv. And on the right hand side we get 3u over 1 plus u squared du. So now following the method of a separable differential equation we can integrate both of these. So when we integrate 1 over v with respect to v we'll get ln of the modulus of v plus some constant. And this is going to be equal to, if we integrate this, this is quite a standard ln type function again, we'll get 3 over 2 times ln of the modulus of 1 plus u squared. But because 1 plus u squared is always positive, we don't need the modulus. So I'll just write it as ln of 1 plus u squared. Okay, so then let's take e to the power of both of these sides. So e to the power of ln v gives us the modulus of v. And then e to the power of c, we'll turn this into a new constant, we'll call this r. So I wonder what this constant is going to correspond to. And we've also got this 3 over 2 times ln 1 plus u squared. So when we raise e to the power of this, we get 1 plus u squared to the power of 3 over 2. And spot here as well, because this is the modulus of v, this is positive, and 1 plus u squared to the 3 over 2, this is also positive. And because we've done e to the power of c, e to the power of c has to be greater than 0. So here we even get back our constraint that r has to be greater than 0. So now the next thing that we'll do towards solving this equation is we'll get rid of the modulus sign here. And the modulus sign is actually telling us that we've got two different equations here depending on the sign of v. So there's one case where v is positive and you get a slightly different looking equation when v is negative. You just get rid of the modulus and introduce a minus sign here. When v is positive, this is the case that we'll proceed with. You can just replace this now by r times v equals 1 plus u squared to the power of 3 over 2. And the fact that we're getting two different solutions here shouldn't be a surprise because this links back to what we were saying earlier about how we're not going to get a single circle as our solution. We'll get two different solutions, one corresponding to the upper half of the circle and one corresponding to the lower half. And here, because v is actually the second derivative of y, we can tell which one is going to be which. You can tell when v is positive, the second derivative is positive. This tells you about the curvature of your curve and it tells you that you're going to be in the bottom half of the circle. And when v is negative, we're going to be in the top half of our circle. So let's proceed now and we'll try and solve this equation. So we can, we've got v is du dx. So we'll write this as r times du by dx. And this is equal to 1 plus u squared to the power of 3 over 2. So once again, we've got a separable differential equation which we can solve. So let's do this. We get r times 1 plus u squared to the power of minus 3 over 2. This is now equal to just dx, where we've got a du missing there. So then we can solve this just by integrating both sides. So when we integrate this, what we could do is we could use a via stress substitution, so substitute u is equal to tan theta or tan theta over 2, 
or you can just check by inspection if you're interested that this is going to work. We'll get r times u over 1 plus u squared to the power of 1 half. So this is what we get when we integrate this. And when we integrate here, it's just 1 dx, so we'll just get x plus a constant. And this constant I'm going to call minus a, so we can perhaps see where we're going with this. What we're going to do now is I'll actually square both sides. So we'll be careful when we take square roots later on. But for now, if we square both sides, we'll get an r squared u squared equals x minus a all squared, and then we'll take this over onto the right-hand side and square it, so we just get a 1 plus u squared term here. So before we carry on here, there's a really interesting observation that we can actually make here. So at this point, we can see that the modulus of x minus a has got to be less than or equal to r. So this is really cool, because now, if you assumed the opposite was true, if you assumed the modulus of x minus a was greater than r, then let's think what we get here. We have r squared u squared is equal to x minus a squared into 1 plus u squared. Then x minus a squared is greater than r squared. We've still got this factor of 1 plus u squared. But then, of course, we can get rid of this 1 here. So this is greater than r squared times u squared. So r squared u squared is greater than itself, which is, of course, a contradiction there. So this is really cool because at this stage, we actually get our constraint on x because, of course, the equation of a circle isn't valid for all values of x. So now if we carry on, we'll make u the subject here, or u squared the subject. So we get u squared, and we have r squared minus x minus a squared. So we're starting to see some of this structure, the equation of a circle, starting to appear now. And then we just have x minus a squared on the right-hand side. Then if we make u squared the subject, we get u squared is x minus a squared divided by r squared minus x minus a, all squared. And now we'll take square roots of both sides of this equation. So on the left-hand side, we just get u on its own. Remember, u is dy dx. So we've now finally undone all of our substitutions from earlier. So we get dy dx is equal to, and because we're taking the square root, we'll have a plus or minus, and we've got x minus a divided by the square root of r squared minus x minus a, all squared. So here we'll deal with the plus or minus in a sec, but at this point we can definitely integrate this keeping the plus and minus here using the reverse chain rule. So you can just see by inspection that this is going to work. We'll get minus plus, so the sign swaps, and we get the square root, the same thing in the denominator here, r squared minus x minus a, all squared. So you can check if you like, the derivative of this is indeed this. Okay, so at this point, this is where if you're really keen, you can check that our constraint, the second derivative, has to be positive. This rules out the positive square root case here. So we'll actually turn this into just a negative in this case. And similarly, if we were working in the case where the second derivative had to be negative, then we would only have the positive square root at this point. And don't forget, we've carried out an integration here as well, so we need to add a constant, which we'll call b. So there's no constraints on b here. So now what we can do is we can see that this is actually what we were looking for, isn't it? This is the equation of a circle, at least the bottom half of a circle. And then if we were to take b onto the left-hand side, square everything, you get y minus b all squared is equal to r squared minus x minus a all squared. So then taking this onto the left-hand side, you get x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared. So let's take note of our constraints now. So we've got r has to be greater than 0. There's no constraints on a and b. These can just be any real number. We've also got this constraint that the modulus of x minus a has to be less than or equal to r. But we also need a constraint on y as well. We can actually see this at this point here. So taking b over onto the left hand side, you'll see that the modulus of y minus b, so if you subtract b from both sides to take the modulus, this has got to be equal to the modulus of the square root of r squared minus x minus a all squared. So this is just equal to root r squared minus x minus a all squared. And of course, this square root has to be less than or equal to the square root of r squared, which is less than or equal to r. So you see here the final piece of the puzzle, y minus b, the modulus of this has to be less than or equal to r as well. So we've seen here that our differential equation, when we solve this, we do indeed get exactly the set of circles as our solutions and nothing else.